Hey No Way Kids, what's up? It's me Angie here back at it again with another video. And before we get started with the amazing words that God has in store for every single one of you, we're gonna play a little game. And you've either heard of this game or played it yourself, but it's a good old game of charades. If I could have my lovely guest join me on stage. All right, here with me I have Barbara and Barlet, yeah? Who's gonna be the one that acts out the word? Barbara is. All right, are you ready, Barbara? Yeah. Here is your word. Are you ready? Three, two, one. A brush. A brush, that's correct. Thank you guys, I'm gonna have my next team join me. All right, here with me I have Natalia and Amy. Who's gonna be the one that acts out the word? Amy is. All right, are you ready, Amy? Here is your word. Three, two, one. Phone call. Phone. <laughs> Technically, yes, it was telephone, but I'll give it to you guys, all right? If I could have my next team join me on stage. So right now we're tied, one to one. Are you guys ready? We're gonna have Valeria act it out this time. All right, are you ready, Valeria? Can you guys switch places? Thank you. All right, here's your word. Are you ready? Three, two, one. A baby. A baby, correct. Now you're two to one. If I could have my next team join me on stage. All right, we're gonna have Natalia act out the word this time. Are you ready? All right, here's your word. Three, two, one. No. Fancy? No. I'll give you one more guess. No. What was it, Natalia? Airplane. It was an airplane. Oh. All right, so we're still two to one. If I can have my next team join me on stage. All right, Barbara, are you ready for the next one? Yeah. Here is your word. <laughs> it's a hard one. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Now you're three, two, one. If I can have my next team join me on stage. If you guys get this one incorrect, then that means our other team is the winner. All right, are you ready, Amy? Here's your word. Three, two, one. Thank you. Yeah. Nice job, guys. So now you're three to two. Next team, go ahead and join me on stage. All right, are you ready? Valeria, here's your word. Three, two, one. Swimming? Swimming, that's correct. Now you're four to two. This is gonna be our last round. If I can have my next team join me on stage. All right. Here is your word. You don't know what it is? Okay, I'm gonna give you a little, that was a little harder. So I'm gonna give you this one. Three, two, one. Washing your hair? Incorrect. Yeah. The correct word was? Shower. Showering, all right. If I got on my winning team on stage. <laughs> Thank you, girls. All right, let's give you guys a huge round of applause. But do you guys know what time it is? It's worship time! The fight is on I'll hold my ground I'm gonna crash the lies of the enemy I won't back down
Welcome to Glowworm's House of Light. I'm Harley Glowworm, and how may I enlighten you today? Um, I need a new light, please. Well, you've come to the right place. What type of lamp are you considering? Just one that will keep me away from the dark, please. Are you not a fan of the, of the dark? Is any kid my age? A few that shop at Hot Topic, but not many. What type of light are you looking for? Um, a light from my bedside table. Hmm, sorry, we don't have any though, of those. No lamps? Oh, no lamps? No lamps. Um, how about a night light? I'm afraid we don't have those either. What about a flashlight? No. Overheard lights? No. Fluorescent lights? No. Track lights? Still no. Reading lights? No. Shop lights? No. Headlights? Regular or extra bright? I don't care, either one. No and no. Is this a light shop or not? It certainly is. But you don't have any lights at all? Not at all. So you don't have flashlights, night lights, reading lights, headlights, fluorescent lights, floodlights? You didn't ask me about floodlights. Do you have any? Mm, no. <sighs> I'm terribly sorry. You don't seem all that sorry to me. You run a whole store called Glow Warm's House of Light, and yet you don't own any light. There is a light, and it's the brightest and wonderful light in the world. Can you give it to me? I can't give it to you, but I can tell you who has it. Tell me! He is the light of, of the world, and he is Jesus. He came bringing down his light to our dark world. And if you believe in him, he will give you his light so you can glow. He can give me light and make me glow? Yes, he, he can. If you take the time to know him and bask in his light, and then he will give you his light so you can glow. Where is he? Who is he? And who's Jesus? I happen to have his book here. Do you want to give it as well? Normally I hate bad jokes, but I hate the darkness even more. Let's give it a glow so I can have the light of the world. Hey, No Way Kids! What's up? It's me, Angie here, back at it again with another video. And I'm so excited to be bringing you guys the amazing word that God has in store for every single one of you. I encourage you guys to grab your notebook, grab your Bibles, to follow along, and let God touch your hearts. And before we get started, we're going to um, say a quick prayer. If you want to go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. Thank you, Lord, for this date that you have given us, for allowing us to still connect virtually, Lord. We know that you have a big plan for every single child and for everyone at the church, Lord. I declare that every child will have an open mind and open heart to be able to receive the word that you have in store for them. Let it be you that speaks through me on this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. So I'm sure as you guys have um, probably noticed through the skit or through the icebreaker, we're going to be talking about light, but not just any light, God's light. And so I don't know about you guys, but I can definitely remember that when I was younger, um, whenever the lights would go off, I would feel like this immediate fear because it'd be like darkness and you'd be like, oh, it's like, is there something over there? Like you, hear, you would hear noises. And so you needed like like a little night light or something like that. So a little light, something go in the dark to make you feel comfortable, right? And I feel like um, many of us are thankful <laughs> that we have that technology has progressed to the point where so many things can be glow in the dark, or I don't know, but you guys probably have those TikTok lights in your room. Um, as for me, my nails are glow in the dark because I think they're cute, not because I'm scared, but I don't tell anybody that. But anyways, um, and so they kind of, the little light gives us reassurance and it helps us rest easy. So of, clo of course, our glow in the dark decorations, um, they might not have, the same brightness as maybe our flash, a flashlight or any other type of light, but they can't just simply glow on their own. So in fact, glow in the dark materials need regular light during the day so they can charge up for the evening of illumination. So if you notice, whenever you have a glow in the dark item, you have to kind of shed light on it before it can even be glow in the dark. It's kind of like, like charging it up, right? And so chemicals inside these glow-in-the-dark paints and decorations absorb the light from the sun and indoor lights so that when we flip the switch at bedtime, they can give off that light overnight. 
And so the more light they receive during the day, the more they glow. And so if you guys have any type of glow-in-the-dark item, I encourage you guys to test this out and see for yourselves. And we may not know the exact properties that are inside of the glow-in-the-dark or how exactly it works, but we think I think it's pretty cool that something that rece receives um, outer light can glow within itself, if that makes sense. So today, like I said, we're going to be talking about um, Jesus' light. And so, and so today we're going to be reading in John 1, 1 to 15. So I encourage you guys to either write down this verse in your notebook or turn to your Bibles. And so it says, In the beginning the Word was already there. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God from, from the beginning. God made all things through the Word. God did not make anything without Him. It is the Word who caused everything to live. Because of this, he has brought light to all people. The light shines in the dark, and the dark cannot put out the light. God sent a man to, a man to bring his message. His name was John. He came to tell people about the light. God wanted everyone to believe in the one who is the light. John himself was not the light. God sent him to tell people about the light. The true light gives light to every person. The light was now coming into the world. The word was now in the world. God had made the world through him, but the people in the world did not know who he was. He came to the place that was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But some people did accept him. They did believe in him. He gave authority to those people to become God's children. They did not become God's children in the usual human way. They were not born because of what any people wanted. They were not born because of what any man decided. No, they were born from God. The word became a man. He lived among us. We saw how great and how good he is. He is great and good as only the father's one true son can be. He is completely kind. He speaks only what is true. John told people about the word. He shouted, this is the man that I told you about. He comes after me. But he is greater than I am. He was already there before I was born. And so John begins his gospel by saying that Jesus is the light. He describes Jesus coming into a dark world that did not understand him. As it said, some people did believe in him. Some people didn't. But J Jesus knew what his mission was and that God had sent him to be the light in the, in the world full of darkness. And it doesn't mean that the world was actually dark, that he needed to flip a switch, but he means dark within skin, sin, not sin, sin. And so he talks about another man, John the Baptist, who testified about Jesus, telling people, this man is the light. He has come to save you from darkness. And I ask you guys, have you guys ever told someone that statement? Have you guys ever talked to someone about Jesus and told them, hey, there's someone who, who is the light and have you ever tried to share that light, right? Because we know that when we, when we have Jesus in our hearts, we become the light. And so we have to spread it. It's kind of like, how would I say? Like when you're spreading, I was going to say coronavirus, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> All right. So let's think of an example of when you put the flashlight under, under a table and the flashlight is a light, right? And the flashlight is facing upwards, but it can't fully, fully shine its light to where it needs to go because the table is blocking it, right? And so if you were to remove that flashlight and put it on top of the table, it's able to do its job. So think of it as if you're not speak, you have the light in you because you have Jesus in you, but you're not spreading his word. You're kind of hiding your light, right? You're like, you're covering it. You're not letting it get to its full potential, which can also mean you're not letting God do his will in your life by spreading to others. Deep thoughts. And so Jesus says in chapter eight directly that he is the light and that anyone who follows him will not only receive light, but life. That life he describes in eternal life. Jesus wants us, wants to give us life full of light here on earth and eternal life on heaven so let's reach that part of chapter 8 real quick and it's in john 8 12 to 19. jesus spoke to the people again he said 
I am the light of the world. Those people who become my disciples will never walk in the dark. No, they will, they will have the light that gives life. The Pharisees began to argue with him. They said, you are saying things about yourself, but there's nobody else to agree that these things are true. Jesus answered, what I say is true. Even if I do speak about myself, my words are true. I know where I have come from. I also know where I will go. As, as for you, you do not know where I come from. You do not know where I will go. You judge in the way that people think. I do not judge anyone. But if I did judge anyone, I would decide correctly what is right. That is because I am not alone. The Father has sent me, and he is with me. Your own law says there must be two people to agree that something is true. I speak what is true about myself. The Father who sent me also speaks what is true about me. Then they asked him, So where is your father? Jesus answered, You do not know either me or my father. If you really knew me, you would also know my father. And so when I was um, studying for this lesson er earlier, um, the first thing that popped into my head is, is yes, probably most of you have played the game Among Us. And so when they're accusing you, you know, of being the imposter and such, you're like, no, it's not me. I'm not the imposter, right? But everybody else is like, no, you don't have proof that it's not you, right? There's no one who can verify that it's not you. But you're like, no, wait, it really, it really isn't me. And so we connect that here to how they didn't really believe Jesus, right? They didn't believe that he was the son of God because they were like, there's no one who can agree with you, right? And so just something to think about and how you can connect it to um, other things, right? And so John is calling us to receive the light of Jesus. Like John the Baptist before him, he invites us to meet Jesus so that we can share the light of Christ. Just as he and John the Baptist did, Jesus is the light of the world. And he wants us to, he wants to save us from the darkness and show us how to glow. And so, as we know, there's a lot of darkness out in the world, things that the world tells us um, is good, is fun, but at the end of the day, we have to think and reflect and ask God, is this something that's, gonna, that's going to better my relationship with you or is it going to harm my relationship, right? And so maybe everybody's playing this one um, video game that just has a lot of bad words or something in it and you're like, oh, I want to play that video game too because I want to fit in with my friends and so on and so forth. But you have to think, is this, if Jesus were right next to me, would he approve of what I was doing, right? And in that same way, uh, maybe your friends are gossiping at school and you're like, oh, like that's kind of mean, but I don't want to be like the outcast if I stand up for them, you know, so you begin to gossip too. But you have to say, you have to kind of stop yourself and say, if Jesus were right next to me, would he approve of this, right? Would this, would this be me? What does connect with me trying to be light, right? And so today we got to see how, how Jesus is the light, right? So just as how some of you might have those glow-in-the-dark stars up in your ceiling, you need to be that light in your friend's life, right? We never know what someone may be going through, what situation, they may, they may be going through, but you can be that light in their life. And at the end of the day, that's what God and Jesus have commanded us to do. Be that light. And it's something special. And just as how we read previously, we have to want to accept to be that light. Because God doesn't force nothing upon us. Everything is a choice. Everything is a choice between what we do want to do and we don't want to do. So do you want to be that light and continue to spread his word and help those people be saved? Or would you rather waste your time here on earth and fit in with the crowd, right? And so when we begin to live our life for Jesus, we will begin to glow. It won't happen overnight, but the more time we spend with Jesus through prayer, Bible study, and worship, the more of his light we will observe. And so we won't have glow in the dark skin, of course, but we will have the confidence and courage of John the Baptist. And so, who was the, the first to testify to the light and of John the Apostle who recorded the story of Jesus so that we could receive his light. So some important points that um, you guys might want to write down here 
is how to how do we continue to have that light in us right because we know that just like any light the light in us can also kind of turn off can also dim and so a way for us to keep that vivid light to keep that light going and on is to pray with him read the bible worship him stay in that communication with him so that just as we learn like glow in the dark things they can our our light can be recharged right can have that vivid light where it can continue to sh um, shine and glow so i asked you guys are you guys ready to glow are you ready to become the light that leads that leads others to jesus jesus said the darkness cannot overcome his light and when we become followers of jesus we will dwell in his light forever if you're ready to glow, I invite you to receive the light of Christ today. And so I invite you to be begin walking in his light so that you too can share the light with the world. And so if there's anything that I feel you guys should definitely take away today, it's that Jesus is the light of the world. And he gives us the option to be that light as well and to continue to spread his word. But as I said, it's an option. God doesn't force anything upon us. And at the end of the day, we have to want to worship him, want to um, be in communication with him so that we can go and spread his word. Just as someone was able to spread his word to us, we have to go on and do the same. And so thank you guys for having me. I'm going to do a quick ending prayer. So right there where you are, go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be here on this day. Thank you for allowing um, this special child watching this video learn something amazing about you, Lord. I declare that you will do great things in their life, and I declare that they will go out and be that light that you need them to be, wherever that may be or to whoever that may be, Lord. I declare that you um, will protect them and wherever they may be and protect their little hearts and their minds. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, thank you for having me today. Um, lots of love and do good in school. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Hey, New Way Kids, what's up? It's me, Angie, here, and I'm so excited to be able to invite you to our anti-Halloween event, October 30th at 6 p.m. As you guys know, the world teaches or shows us a lot of um, different things or celebrations that they, that they do out there, right? And they might not always be in our best interest for our relationship with God. And so I invite you guys to join us, like I said, uh, Friday, October 30th at 6 p.m. here at church to learn about the true meaning behind Halloween and to listen to why, to listen to God and what he has to say, right? And I can't wait to see you guys there. The theme is, hey, Jesus, what's Halloween? Bye, guys.